Hello everybody, hola a todos, cześć wszystkim. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a key cloak cluster on Kubernetes. If you are watching this video, you probably know what key cloak is, but let's do a quick uh, recap. Key cloak is an open source identity and uh, access management project. It's super easy to use. It comes with a lot of out of the box features like SSO, OpenID, uh, OAuth2, social logins, uh, LDAP, uh, and much, much more. I will talk some of those uh, features in the upcoming videos. Um, I also hope that you are not reinventing the wheel and uh, trying to write your own identity and access management software. It is very complex uh, task and there are projects like Keycloak uh, which um, get you covered. I use Keycloak uh, for OpenID and I absolutely love it. So uh, let's see how to set it up on Kubernetes. I have a, a simple project uh, which uh, I will post a link to under the video uh, so that you can check it out and uh, set it up uh, yourself. Uh, I have Kubernetes cluster uh, already configured. Um, some of the prerequisites are listed here. Uh, Kubernetes dashboard, um, Nginx ingress uh, controller, uh, Helm and uh, Bitnami um, chart repo. Uh, I already have it. Uh, most probably you already have it in your uh, cluster and uh, now we are ready to create uh, a key cloak uh, cluster. Let's create a namespace. Let's call it hotel because why not? Um, okay, the namespace is uh, created. Mm, now I will provision a database. It will take uh, a while, uh, that's uh, no problem. Uh, it already printed some of the results, but uh, actually uh, initializing will take uh, around uh, a minute. Uh, I'm provisioning a Kubernetes uh, database. Uh, if I were to deploy Keycloak to cloud um, like AWS, Azure or Google Cloud Platform, I would definitely go with database uh, as a service solution. Um, those cloud vendors, they hire DB experts and can provision highly available, super fast, super secure, and of course, durable databases. Definitely check if uh, this is something you can do. And if you can, then just do it. Uh, however, uh, if you um, have um, some requirements, to run it on uh, Kubernetes, then definitely use a Bitnami uh, chart. Uh, I'm using uh, the PostgreSQL HI uh, chart. It will provision a PG pool, a primary node and read nodes for you. Uh, for testing purposes, I'm just using uh, default uh, params, but the most important thing is that uh, I'm already using this chart and my deployment matches the HA um, deployment. Let's take a look at actually at the dashboard, um, at the hotel namespace. So yeah, created one minute ago, everything is green. We can now uh, provision uh, the key cloak server. Okay, uh, again, it will need a minute to, uh, to fully uh, provision. Uh, yeah, uh, but in the meantime, let's take a look at the deployment file. Uh, what do we have here? We have a service. It is a headless service. Uh, port 8080 is mapped to port uh, 80 HTTP for testing purposes. That's fine. And then we have a deployment. In deployment, I have two replica sets. In, um, in production, uh, I would uh, always use at least three. Here I'm using uh, only two because I will kill one of the pods and simply uh, there's a higher chance, 50%, that the instance on which I logged in uh, will be killed. I will get back to it uh, when uh, testing clustering uh, in a moment. By default, a key cloak starts uh, with a database in memory. 
uh, and in order to use a little bit more durable data store we have to uh, configure some uh, db uh, properties uh, like uh, here uh, we are we have to provide the address of the database uh, this is um, the uh, dns that is uh, provided by the um, the helm chart uh, the database is postgres that's the default out of the box one uh, the user uh, as well postgres that's fine you can create your own database you can create your own user that's that's no problem at all database password is actually taken from a secret uh, this secret was of course generated by the helm chart um, then we can change the uh, db schema uh, i use the default one public uh, and we are we also have to uh, tell keycloak what is the uh, vendor the db vendor postgresql so that keycloak can load um, a proper jdbc uh, driver there are some other uh, settings i will talk about them in a moment at the top uh, i'm defining keycloak user keycloak password um, remember to change this password uh, once the uh, the server is up and running uh, alternatively if you need a fixed uh, password then uh, use kubernetes secret uh, just like uh, just like here uh, we will be using uh, nginx uh, ingress that is why we have to set uh, proxy address forwarding to true let's take a look at uh, the dashboard yeah so we have keycloak deployed we have two pods that's fine uh, let's deploy um, the the ingress now okay okay uh, the ingress uh, will be uh, available in a few seconds it's a simple um, ingress as you can see it um, uh, it has the key cloak as a backend um, port 80 and uh, it uses auth.localtest.me uh, localtest.me is a dns service which defines a records for all subdomains of localtest.me uh, and they all point to loopback address so no changes in your local hosts file uh, is needed uh, i like this service uh, very much uh, there are some other dynamic dns services like uh, nipio uh, should you need more advanced um, features uh, definitely check it out uh, but uh, for us uh, for the purpose of this demo local test.me is what we uh, need i will just copy this um, url and i will open it uh, in here i will log in admin admin remember change the password and uh, yeah i'm in everything is uh, working fine uh, i will be talking about uh, keycloak in detail in the next uh, videos but let's get back to um, to the clustering so we could say that we have an okay architecture we have a replica set of keycloak servers uh, in case one dies uh, there are other servers uh, to handle the requests and um, you know since we will be using OpenID and once we get the JSON web token we take it and we go and talk to our database we don't really need keycloak right um, but say I'm an admin I'm doing actual work I'm you know I'm in the middle of something and my instance dies uh, the session information is lost and I have to re-log in. Not the end of the world, uh, but uh, Keycloak actually comes with a clustering support. There are a few different clustering uh, discovery strategies available, but since we are running on Kubernetes, DNS ping is a natural uh, choice. So if you take a look actually at the deployment uh, file, you can see that uh, we are using the discovery protocol as dns ping 
with some additional uh, discovery properties. DNS query is key cloak. Um, is inside the same namespace, so we can just use key cloak and uh, we will find all the pods that are assigned to our uh, service. We also have uh, information about uh, how many cache owners and uh, auth sessions owners we want to have. And there can be, um, this can be different settings. Um, you can check out the documentation to learn more about those, but I set them to two, just like the, the size of our uh, replica set. Okay, let's actually take a look at um, at one pod and uh, let's take a look at uh, the logs from this pod. At the bottom, uh, we see that uh, we finished uh, rebalance and we have uh, two team members um, and uh, MZB is the current one, that's this one, and we have 64Q uh, in, uh, in the cluster as well. Okay, but we will actually kill this one. Okay, um, let's take a look at the replica sets. Okay, uh, Kubernetes is already starting a new one. Uh, and uh, let's try to use the console. Yeah, I wasn't uh, logged out, uh, I can still use it. Um, after a moment, uh, we, uh, we will have a new cluster. Uh, let's take a look at the logs. Okay, so we have information that MZB uh, left the cluster. A new cluster is starting. Let's wait uh, a moment, uh, refresh the logs, and we should see um, this new uh, class, th this new member in in our cluster. Okay. Um, Okay, and it finished rebalance. Uh, 64Q is the current one, and the new one is uh, AMRC, uh, and they are both uh, members of the same cluster. So uh, everything is fine. Uh, all the auth sessions are replicated between these two um, between these two nodes. So. Folks, uh, that's all for this uh, episode. In the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to set up and customize password policies, how to enforce MFA, how to actually use OpenID SSO, how to integrate uh, slash import users from LDAP. So stay tuned and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.